Yeah, I saw it in the movies, um, quite unexpectedly. Uh, in 1955, I thought, and from the poster, <laughs> it looked like a, a Western. Uh, Robert Mitchum kind of looked like a, an old-time gunslinger or something. I don't know what, it, but he was a preacher. Of course, preachers look like gunslingers, <laughs> kind of. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's funny because Charles Lawton originally wanted Gary Cooper for the part that, that fit Mitchum so well. That Lawton was auditioning actors for the part, and he is describing the character, and he said, this character is a despicable shit. And Mitchum in the audience, or in the among the actors, raised his hand and said, here! And so he was immediately cast. The uh, The film itself it, uh, was, was very uh, jarring at first to see because uh, it was in black and white. That was an unexpected thing because in 1955, everything was in color. If it wasn't in color, there was a reason. It, you know, um, Either it was an RD or cheap. <laughs> and uh, it was a severe film. And it, it left a, a very strange echo in my mind uh, about the nature of evil and uh, how, like Lillian Gish says in the beginning, beware of false prophets who appear like ravening wolves. And that's exactly, I mean, it gives me goosebumps, <laughs> but it's exactly true. Lillian Gish goes with the film so perfectly because the film's look has a silent aura, a silent film aura about it. Plus, it's kind of a little bit German impressionist, the shadows and the severity of the lines. But Lillian Gish's performance ameliorates everything and, and makes everything that she touches smooth and harmonious. And she's a, a, a magical presence in that film, almost like the good fairy in Wizard of Oz. Uh, she's, she just is everything that's good. She represents everything that's good. And, of course, Harry Powell represents everything that's all the way evil. All the way to the bone, to the core, evil, child-killing murdering evil and and uh, her performance just floats over that evil and kind of subdues it and it's a very magical thing uh, and she only I think is the only she's the only one in the world that could have done it and every single performance in that film is can't be done any in any other way or by any other person all the components and elements that make that film great came together in this happenstantial wonderful art artistic accident that happens every once in a while and thank god it happened for this film night of the hunter was based on a true story uh written by a man named grub and uh, James Agee and Charles Lawton took it and reformed it into this incredible piece of folk art that stands still as a unique, uh, among the films made at its time during, in 1955, it is a total standalone. Great cinematographer Stanley Cortez, who took over for Greg Toland for Orson Welles on The Magnificent Ambersons, and if you've seen that film, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's photographed so beautifully. 
and black and white. And this, in black and white, starkly gothic, almost German impressionist atmosphere that is generated by, by uh, this cinematographer is, is quite unique, just like the film itself. Uh, he achieved a look that has never been done before or since. <laughs> that's, and then that's something to say about a cinematographer because it only happens happenstantially when everything falls into place like it did with this film. In keeping with the mood, Walter Schumann and Charles Lawton put together a, an accompanying piece of mu pieces of music, but it's all sim the score to the film, that weaves together the Appalachian River music and the spirituals and, and this forlorn kind of strange, uh, menacing atmosphere. It's a kind of a menacing, it has a, a kind of a weirdly menacing atmosphere the music does because it's kind of removed a little bit. This film may may not have done very well when it opened, but in the in the years following, it has gathered a huge cavalcade of brilliant directors and writers and actors who have been deeply influenced in their work by this film. They everybody cites it as a turning point in their in in their understanding of what film means whatever that means my initial reaction to the film is the same one that the general public and the critics had cuz i being an unenlightened what 8 9 year old uh, <laughs> didn't get it and neither did the public and it kind of sunk and as a result, because of the crazy Hollywood financing reality of the 50s, a great, potentially great director only made one film, only directed one film. And that film is the standalone classic that is Night of the Hunter. I mean, it, it, the, the, uh, the impact that it has on audience is the same still uh, for people who who aren't expecting it and who go in to see this film are have the same reaction they they're completely knocked back by it and that's you know what's what it's supposed to do it's it's an amazing uh, deathless classic and it's probably one of the greatest films ever made